was known for impressions. I cannot emphasize this enough to people who were not there during the Dana Carvey era. It's just an impression to an impression to an impression and then cutting abruptly to the next thing. They could have cut out like every time he's talking as an annoying character at the same time. <laughs> then there would be no movie. No. It'd be he's Brent Spiner farting the movie. <laughs> Welcome back to Movie Nights, everyone! <laughs> you ready for a disguise -y good time? <laughs> You're not gonna find it here. <laughs> Keep looking. We're going to the Turtle Club today! Uh. Am I not turtly enough for the Turtle Club? It's Master of Disguise. It's the master of no scene endings. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So let's take things back. For people who don't know. <laughs> or woefully ignorant of this woefully movie. Woefully <laughs> ignorant. I'm gonna go back a little further than that. In the 80s and 90s, one of the most popular comedians. <laughs> was not gonna do it. Was not gonna do it. What do you mean you're not gonna do it? You are too gonna do not it. Not gonna do you it. You are gonna yeah. do it. Was Dana Carvey. He was on SNL. He was known for doing his impressions. It's not aged terribly well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not someone who has been a huge Dana Carvey fan, although he's been in some good movies like Wayne's World. Wayne's World was very funny. He was not the star of Wayne's World, <laughs> but one of the stars, I suppose. He's not the titular Wayne, and that's the important thing. <laughs> He was one of the most popular stars in the world. He made the Dana Carvey show, and that yeah. was sort of his beginning of Fall From Grace. <laughs> There's a whole documentary about the Dana Carvey show, which is really funny, and I recommend it, but it didn't do well. And then Dana Carvey had a lot of health problems, so he was out of the limelight for a long time. He was meant to have his big theatrical starring comeback in Master of Disguise in 2002. And it, you it, know how that worked out. <laughs> it's known as one of the worst movies of all time. Probably being kind calling it one of the worst movies of all time. <laughs> Defining it as a movie is, <laughs> is generous, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I mean that like literally because it's, it's so... It's barely a movie. It's yeah. so <laughs> chopped up and trying to make it coherent. It's a combination of things they didn't shoot and things that they cut out of it that makes it just nonsense. Mm. There's like some scenes that have to be carried by the voiceover because they didn't film key scenes. Yeah. Jennifer would sneak into the mansion by pistachio would distract Bowman. And there's a million scenes they filmed but did not actually include in the movie, probably because they were even less complete than the things they did include in the movie. Yeah. So you just see a montage, like you're barraded <laughs> by Dana Carvey doing stupid impressions during the credits. And you're like, what was this going to be? What yeah, was that going to be? It's very confusing <laughs> because it really is a nonsense movie because it was chopped to hell for various reasons. So they ended up with something that was kind of pieced together to create 80 minutes if they stretch out the credits to nine minutes long, mm -hmm. including a bunch of cutscenes or dancing or whatever, and a two minute opening sequence. It defies you to know what's happening or, or pay attention <laughs> yeah, to anything. Yeah, pay attention. It's infuriating too, because <laughs> when you see all these scenes that weren't finished or key moments that need to be in the movie that yeah. they had to just kind of tell you happened. Like plot important things yeah. weren't filmed. And then you see the crap in the credits where it's like they film <laughs> crap where, you I know, there's a dinosaur, the, the there's a bunch of- history. Right. <laughs> bunch of garbage. You're like, why? He's dressed up as a toy man in prosthetics. Can you describe what the plot of Master of Disguise is? <laughs> Dana Carvey plays barely a character. He's a caricature. Oh, excuse me. He is pistachio no, disguise. You can, you can barely call this a character, though, because all he does, he does a bad Italian accent for a bit, and then he falls into random impressions and stuff. That's one of the big things that barely makes this a movie, too, is he barely plays a real character at any point. He's just like, it's, it's me, it's being stupid, and then he puts on a mask and acts dumber than that. It goes on and on like that until it finally ends with uh, Brent Spiner farting a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the... <laughs> It's pistachio disguise story, master of disguise. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. What are you people still doing here? You just saw the movie. 
okay? Pistachio Disguisey is among a line of famous, destined, almost supernatural disguisers yeah, who uh, have they protected... Yeah, those perfect face masks. So you, sometimes yeah. you... Except for Dana Carvey. His other family members can put on a mask and then just become a different yeah, actor. Yeah, Dana Carvey is just Dana Carvey with some prosthetics on. They protect the world from evil. That is, I think, the clearest description they give us at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. That they protect the world from evil in it's some vague <laughs> way with their disguises. Sort of secret agent-esque, but there's no real agency that authorizes them to go on missions. They just yeah. do stuff. Maybe they used to. <laughs> I think maybe they're run by the Illuminati based yeah. on the imagery in this movie. Yeah, very unclear. <laughs> what proof there's evil behind the Illuminati? It's the master of disguise. <laughs> you are a disguise. Yes, but that's your disguise. I'm begging you, curb your yammering skull cave. Pistachio's father has this run-in with Devlin Bowman in the 70s. They do a great reference to the movie 10 with Bo Derek, which I'm this sure is, kids really yeah. understood. Something goes wrong, so he decides his son, Pistachio, is not going to continue in the Disguisey line. He's not going to continue this work because he wants to protect him. Disguisey eventually comes across his grandfather, who teaches him the way of Disguisey stuff because his dad has been kidnapped by Devlin Bowman in the present day of 2002. He's very bad at it. He already a hot assistant. Devlin Bowman wants his dad to steal things via celebrity cameos. And then there's a climax at the end where they stop him. Mm. Well, actually, no, I guess they like, they have to stop each other, really. And then there's a scene in Costa Rica they tacked on later where they stop him. That's another messy thing about this movie. You're saying it originally had like an NC-17. <laughs> That's what I said. It <laughs> no. was hardcore. It was, it was like, like the grossest girls. movie ever made, and <laughs> they need to cut this. <laughs> It should have been NC-17 to, like, spare people. <laughs> no one needs to see this. The studio told him, make it PG. So he said, I'll make a bunch of stupid jokes that my nine-year-old <laughs> son would like, right? Yeah, he wrote it for his sons that, who were around nine-ish. So Even though there's stuff like children. ten references. And... Yeah, a lot of the references are, are very old. You got a little wiener and some tiny nuts. A little wiener and some tiny nuts. The first thing they shot, though, was the turtle scene. Creme de the creme. <laughs> yeah, they shot it September 24, 2001. So they thought before they started shooting this extremely silly movie for nine-year-olds <laughs> that they should have a moment of silence for September 11. So uh, Dana Carvey in the turtle costume was observing a moment mm. of silence <laughs> before they shot that scene. And that was the beginning of the movie. So they should have known it was on the path to disaster. <laughs> it's just very weird time. <laughs> And then they said, we're going to have a group prayer. So as I remember it, there was a, all of us, everyone else, civilian clothes. I'm dressed the turtle man, and I'm holding hands, and I'm lowering my head and praying. I just saw at the moment, this is really strange. It's very ridiculous. Turtle, turtle. Half of this movie, when we were watching it, was one of us going, eh. Yeah, you get uncomfortable. You tense up watching certain scenes because you just like, want it to end. Because, like, a scene will happen and you have a question and you're like, Meh, should I say something? And then the next scene happens and you're like, is it worth it to ask? Because you know the answer is just because the movie needed to do something? Because impression? He was known for impressions. I cannot emphasize this enough to people who were not there during the Dana Carvey era. He was known for his impressions. They thought it was hilarious when he did George Bush on SNL. This was so famous, the actual George Bush Sr. did a cameo on SNL because his impression was so well known. So he does George Bush Jr. in this movie because that was the current president. Which is I, so important. They put it on the cover of the movie yeah. like it's a main well, character. Well, they had to remind people he's the George Bush guy because yeah, that was like the one part of his it legacy. It was the other George Bush he <laughs> was famous for doing. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. we'll throw in George yeah. Bush Jr. And they filmed that scene last minute and replaced something because otherwise they're there is no ending for Brent Spiner's character. So either they didn't have a conclusion for him or they cut the conclusion to make more nonsense. It's all in a day's work for Captain America. Please, don't slap me. So if you ever want to see Data Fart. <laughs> That's the one funny part of the movie. I yeah. laughed every time Data it, farted. It does work. <laughs> 
it's because of the uncomfortable silence, which you yeah. said was something Dana Carvey said, not the fart, which, you know, credit to him, that is what makes those scenes work yeah. sometimes. I especially like, you know, when they come back to, I think, the third time when he's in the car with James Brolin, and, and he's done laughing, and he's like, oh, I didn't fart. He's like, oh. I think that's probably the funniest moment in the movie. One time, maybe you're laughing along with it, is that? (laughs) No, I am laughing along with it during the fart scenes every Mm -hmm. single time. I think it's because it was the perfect timing. They knew every fart except the very last one had to be a... Mm -hmm. Like, just a little... We went back and forth about big farts, little farts, finally just determined one fart with different reactions. Which was a sound that I made. I'm very proud of that. Right. Can you do that again? Very nice. It didn't have to be long, it's... gross farts. It just had to be an embarrassing, abrupt moment for Brent Spiner. Of all the big characters he's played, <laughs> this is the best. Of all of the movies with offensive <laughs> Italian stereotypes with him uh, in it, this is the second one I, we reviewed with him. I will say, <laughs> a lot of it is Brent Spiner's embarrassed reaction that makes those fart scenes work because, you know, he's kind of got that dejected, yeah. like, I don't know what to do to get out of this. Like a lot of the movie, it doesn't know how to get out of a scene, so Ooh, wipe out or just comedy killing dissolve out. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the only part of the movie that understands comedic timing at all. And if the IMDb trivia is to be believed, some of these I'm like, I don't know where they got this from. The studio wanted it cut right after the farts, but Dana Carvey was like, no, what makes it funny is the awkward silence afterward. We just have to hang on that for as long as possible. Right. Well, to me, it was like a musical thing of ha 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 ha. And then the silence. We had, to, we had to hang on there for ultra long. Maybe mm. when they were doing their chops in the editing room, they thought we can save some time cutting that out, but it would not nearly be as funny without the, no. the moment afterwards. The fart's not the funny part. It's the, the part after it. They could have cut out like every time he's talking as an annoying character to save time. <laughs> then there would be no movie. I know. He's, It'd he's be an Brent Spiner farting the movie. <laughs> Yeah, just a short movie of Brent Spiner farting. It's like, there's this minor character Dana Carvey plays, but mostly it's about James Rowan and Data farting. Yeah, Data farting. <laughs> Data, we don't have time for this. I cannot help myself. <laughs> 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 So much of this movie doesn't understand timing, but I don't know how much of it is down to what they filmed and how much of it is down to the editing. Phelan was talking about comedy killing dissolves. That's what I call a dissolve right after a funny moment. Too many things do this. It kills the joke. You say a joke and then you wait and then you fade into the next scene. And so many of these do that because they don't know how to end the scene. And I think it's Mm. because they chop them up. Do the stupid transition too with the logo flying by wiping, which, you know, just makes it feel like a low light reel. I can't call it a highlight. Light reel, a little <laughs> light reel, where it's just like, yeah, that's the end of that. There's our fourth weird giant coin that wipes the screen for, for no, no reason. reason whatsoever. The most abrupt one, and this was a victim of editing, was the turtle scene. <laughs> because I think the turtle scene was much longer. But the way they've chopped it up, it's a genius nonsense type of thing where it's like <laughs> it turns from being the least funny thing in the world into being like, this is such nonsense. Like, you have to be a genius to make it this nonsense. <laughs> The character annoys me so much. It's so, like, they cut out any reasoning in this scene, like only Mm -hmm. the barest amount of plot. And I had to ask you what actually happened in that scene because I'm like, what did they accomplish here? But like, and it's only because he has the assistant woman with him that anything gets accomplished. And it's like, I guess he really needed her. Otherwise, he's going to go to that club and go, turtle, turtle, turtle. <laughs> Pistachio Disguise and his hot assistant. She had a name, yeah? What was her <laughs> Jennifer. name? Jennifer. The it's actress's on, uh, name Spin was also City. Jennifer, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Jennifer as Jennifer. She's on Spin City. It's the only other thing I know her oh, from. Oh, an actually funny thing. Okay. <laughs> so he's with his hot assistant lady, and they're going to the Turtle Club because they think someone at the Turtle Club will have some intel on where his father's been taken. The name of the club, Turtle Club, is coincidental. It's not like everyone there is a turtle, but Pistachio has uh, mistakenly thought everyone is some sort of turtle hybrid person of sorts. So he turns himself into the turtle man who just says turtle over and over again like a Pokemon. Yeah, he thinks that's what turtles do. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Yeah, as if that's what what turtles do. (laughs) Turtle! Turtle! (laughs) Turtle! While the assistant Jennifer is actually getting some information, he is going around saying turtle. Turtle? No. No, turtle. No. Turtle. 
this just abruptly cuts to him doing break dancing and then dissolving because mm-hmm. they didn't know how to end what they chopped out, so they well, just cut to that. But Adam it's, Sandler it, contributed oh, a right. very important oh, part to this. How could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> they have some sort of altercation with this guy, and then Pistachio, as the turtle man, bites his nose off and then spits it back on. <laughs> that was a crazy Adam Sandler idea to have him chomp the nose yeah, off. Yeah, that was spit the, it back that's on. the first time I've seen that. That's, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then he break dances, and then it dissolves, and then you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what was that? It was so fast, like you have no way to process anything. And you're like, why did they, why did that happen? Why mm-hmm. did they go there? Why? It's like magic. Like, why is he breakdancing now? Why did it cut from the fight to the breakdancing? And why did it dissolve to this? Why was he a turtle man? Why was he saying turtle all the time? Who was that person? What was that? What was that line? And then they show you the stuff that they cut out in the end credits. And you're like, what the fuck yeah. is going on in the rest of that scene? <laughs> Made no sense. Turtle. <laughs> I don't even really know what to say. They kept it in because it had something plot important in it. Mm-hmm. Unlike the other things they either well, didn't or chopped that out. character was just so funny. Because they put that in the trailers. <laughs> oh, yeah. They that thought was... that was one of the best things in the movie. Yeah, that's the only thing you got from the trailers is he would say the turtle lines over and over again. Turtle for the turtle club. <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle. <laughs> turtle turned out to be the icon of our movie. I don't know what's going on with this turtle thing. It's just really gotten out of hand. It's out of control. I don't even like turtles. Who'd want to go to a turtle club? That scene with the nose, I don't know if we've emphasized how insane that was that he bit someone's nose off and spit it back on. Apparently this was one of two jokes that Adam Sandler contributed to this because he was one of the producers because it's a Happy Madison film. So he did that and the scene where they're talking about the history of the disguises where they helped Abraham Lincoln win the election by dancing to a a song from the future. Yeah, I like to move it. Nonsensically that's there and Mm -hmm. then you're, you're meant to laugh at it. It, and that's yeah. it. Hit it, boys! I like to move it, move it. Lincoln dancing funny is one of the comedy <laughs> constants of the universe. <laughs> that's right. It's literally never it fails. It always works. Them putting in all these jokes they thought were for nine year olds, but this movie wasn't really marketed as just a kid's movie. They're just kind of yeah, like, this is a great to be comedy. Kind of a family movie, I think. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, this is a great comedy. Like, no one's going to find this that funny. <laughs> No, it's for they shouldn't no have marketed it as a comedy. It's for no one. That's he the wrote big it. Sin. He wrote it for his kids to like, and I guess they thought a lot of PG movies were lame. So he's like, "What's the most you can get away with in a PG movie that's almost PG-13?" And apparently, not much. For instance, you can't hit someone with a fist unless they're wearing like their face is covered, which is why there's ninjas at the end, and most of the fights are slap fights because you can do slap fights, you just can't punch yeah, someone. That's the disguise technique. Yeah. From bullshit. Yeah. I mean, the scene was written without ninjas, but in a PG movie, they were afraid you couldn't have slaps and punches. Yeah. So then they said, well, if you have ninjas with shrouds over their face, you could punch them. So then that's how the ninjas came about. Uh-huh. You can't do sexual innuendo, but you can do poop jokes, so fart jokes, mm. which I think was a success. <laughs> <laughs> then he becomes literal shit. <laughs> That part legit, like, I was actually, like, laughing really hard at it because you're watching it in disbelief that this is happening. He's on the run from some of Devlin's goons, and he disguises himself as a cow pie for no reason. This is after he does a Quint from Jaws impression for absolutely no reason. (laughs) Why was he Quint? Here's an impression I can do. Let's fit it in somehow. And you're like, why is this happening? And then the next scene happens. Uh, You're like, why is this happening? He does a Quint from Jaws thing until he talks about the scar and He's like, whoops, I didn't put a scar on, I guess, so I have to run around and be cow shit. Now, I've seen Jaws. I didn't remember that he showed a scar at that point, so I didn't know what was happening. Like, I remember that famous line. Well, he talks speech. about, he says something about a scar, and then he held up his arm when there's nothing. Right, right. That's, I get it from what you said, but I didn't remember that's what he was referencing. Mm. I remember the doll's eyes lines, and I remember that speech from Jaws, but I didn't know what the arm thing was, so I'm like, yeah. why is he looking at his arm, and why is this scene happening? And I 
I was very confused. Somehow that black hair gives him away as Mr. Peru from the previous <laughs> scene. So he runs away and decides not to just disguise himself as the grass, but as a cow pie, which just brings more attention to him, which the other guy steps in, but somehow does not reveal him. He doesn't no. realize he's then stepping he just on a man. Then he stands up immediately while they're still there yeah, for no reason, he, and then they start chasing him. They start chasing him, and then they start playing like a Scooby-Doo-esque yeah. theme for he's Master the of the Sky. Master of the Sky. <laughs> they do like a montage of him as a piece of shit running around. <laughs> it's his true <laughs> form revealed. <laughs> It's so true, though, so mm. I can't be mad because he is a piece of shit. <laughs> so. Well, we knew we had to have some poo humor because they said in PG you can do pu poo humor. It's easy for me to say poo humor, but not anything sexual or violent. This guy was called Mr. Poohead. Yeah, Mr. Poohead, or the poo-headed thing. Poo-headed thing. That and it's be... another scene that has no ending, so he just goes to a bus stop and reads and then a paper. Just, and... yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the second of maybe three versions of the Master of Disguise theme they decided needed to be in this movie they have so many master of disguise songs in this and i feel like you know it's a real lost art you know <laughs> movies having their own title in mm -hmm. the songs but master of disguise was not the one to bring it back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i feel uh, ashamed really because i was laughing at that scene and i think genuinely so at some parts of this movie i, I enjoyed master of disguise <laughs> and i'm kind of embarrassed to admit it because i mean i've i've admitted i've liked a lot of bad movies but master of disguise i feel like if you say you enjoyed any part of it you might have to go into hiding <laughs> <laughs> it so goes into is, a slightly offensive territory with some of these characters. Oh yeah, there's so many racial caricatures <laughs> in this. It defies belief. I feel yeah. like by 2002, you knew you shouldn't be <laughs> in brown face. What do you call Indian makeup? Brown face? I think brown face. Whatever it is, Whatever you, you should have known by then. Dana Carvey's obviously watching Dennis the Menace 2 and saw his hero <laughs> Carrot Top doing as well. Well, if he can do it. If he can do it, if John Candy can do it, if Mike Myers can do it later in Love Guru, <laughs> certainly I can do it. All of the greats have done terrible Indian impressions. Prince Lale Jama from the Ringy Dingy Heights, New Delhi, India, 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 India. We wanted to make sure that they knew right. he was from India, not uh, Afghanistan or any of the Arab countries. It's never funny, though. That's the thing. You knew it was bad back then anyway, but when they found it more acceptable to do these <laughs> kinds of caricatures in movies, it's never funny. It's like, okay, if you're supposed to find an accent funny, like, is that it? Mm -hmm. You do not talk when I talk. When I talk, you do not talk. It is very simple. You're just supposed to laugh at the funny foreigner? Like, it's, yeah, really it's no, nothing. And that's so there's much There's no of this substance movie. to that scene or the joke than that. It's just, yeah, he's a foreigner, LOL. Yeah, he does that. He does the Scarface impression, which is also offensive. Yeah, um, not a very good Al Pacino. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad Al Pacino. He was known for his impressions. <laughs> Tell to my little friend. Pistachio, disguising himself, is a caricature of Italians. Mm -hmm. All of his family is a caricature of Italians. There's no part of this that isn't offensive in some way. Yeah, and just, <laughs> it's annoying listening to him talk in his fake Italian accent yeah. after a while, so just shut up. Yes, I give you a cheese dog. Yes, a nice cheese accent. I like the papa. He's telling other people, you know, I want you to be doing this constantly. It's yeah. like... <laughs> Real irony, you telling other people to shut up. No. He's the most annoying character in the movie. Although, I did think it was funny. His name is Pistachio Disguisey. It's <laughs> terrible, but I thought it was funny. It was fun for like one second, okay? Only one second? It's that or movie references that are just there to be references. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a no movie reason. that did some things like that. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. You too, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Saber tooth. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a reference, it was just a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> Master of Disguise is a, is yeah. better than to boldly fly. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing it's better than. <laughs> it's better, it's shorter. It's significantly it's shorter. shorter. It's like yes. a, a third, a fourth. How much shorter How is it? How many <laughs> Masters of Disguise can fit into boldly fly? I would rather watch Master of Disguise the amount of times it takes to fill in the time of to boldly flee than watch to boldly flee again. <laughs>
Who's your daddy? I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. Anyway, we're talking about references. They and then the... at the very end, there's a little person in his stupid little slap oh, yeah, suit. Mario. And he's dressed up as Mario. Fucking, Speaking of that, <laughs> fucking of that Doug humor. Ass humor. What if he was Mario? <laughs> and then he slaps him. He's it's so funny. Mario what for absolutely no reason. Why was there a little guy, but he's Mario? Oh, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> We just thought it was so amazing what Gabriel was doing for us in yeah. that suit that we had to show him. And he was actually in there and doing all the slapping and all the stuff. They do The Exorcist for no reason. <laughs> yeah, his grandfather, <laughs> his shows, grandfather up. shows up and it's The Exorcist and there's no payoff to that. They're just like, you know The Exorcist. Anyway, he's here now. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's supposed to be a spooky scene. It's not like he's doing an exorcism. I mean, if you cut that shot out, it wouldn't change anything in mm -hmm. that scene. Like, there's no and reason for it. There'd be the same amount of laughs. Zero. I understood that reference less than some of the other ones, because some of the other ones I feel like were just there because Dana Carvey thought he could do that impression mm -hmm. <laughs> badly, and so he does those, but it, it's still nonsense. Like, why are they doing Scarface? Why are they doing Jaws? All the nine-year-olds lose their shit at the Exorcist music. <laughs> At least, I feel like when I was that age, I, I might have recognized some of the imagery from The Exorcist, even if I hadn't seen it, but it's still, there's no reason <laughs> I don't for think it. the majority of kids are going to really be like, oh, The Exorcist! <laughs> yeah, there's nothing funny about it, because it's, it's not tonally anything that fits. If maybe his grandfather was a creepy guy, mm -hmm. and then he showed up like that, and it's like, oh no, who's this creepy guy? Oh, it's his grandfather. I could get maybe why they, <laughs> they got to that place. His grandfather's just a lazy man. He's like, oh, the this pop-up book says, I don't have to help you. I want my son to die, I guess. Oh, that was another one that they wrote in last minute because they had to figure out why he wasn't in that scene. So they made that up. <laughs> they made that up. And then yeah. they had to have the grandfather narrate a bunch of it. Even yeah. though it's like, why would he know that this is going on? <laughs> He wouldn't. So this is one of our arbitrary plot points. Got some notes from the studio. Had to come up with a way to get rid of the grandfather. So it was just arbitrary that he must go away. He's not allowed to help. So we had to make a joke out of it. That's <laughs> like, right. There's that nonsense scene where he calls up the grandfather and his head appears in like a giant ball. And you're like, why yeah. is this happening? <laughs> That's, That's just through the whole movie, though. Why is it happening? It's just like an impression to an impression to an impression of not very funny things happening and then cutting abruptly to the next thing so you don't have time to even not enjoy that. It just moves to the next thing. I feel and like, there were more impressions that weren't in this. They did a yeah, gladiator reference. You can see them all in the end credits. Just random things that weren't even in there. It could have reined Dana Carvey in a bit. Like, this never would have been a masterpiece, but I feel like <laughs> if you tried to have a little bit more of a story in there, you could have him be some kind of secret agent character who's good at being a chameleon. I and, think that and taking was the, over. the original idea. Well, that's what it should have been <laughs> instead well, of this crap. But you need like Austin Powers level at least, like something um, like some that. Some of this felt like they were trying to be Austin Powers badly. Like the fact he likes big butts, and then they had a cut scene mm. where there's like these fembots basically with big butts yeah, yeah, that Brent Spiner exactly. brings in, and they use it in the end credits, but it's not in the movie. Or you can have him do a Shrek impression for a second for. Yeah. Yeah. reason well, and donkey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do for you now a scene from the hit motion picture Shrek. Why don't you get away from me, donkey? I'm making waffles. So more is more. I thought it was going to be on the DVD. Oh, uh, well. I decided <laughs> to put it in the actual movie. To be fair to Dana Carvey, I don't think all of this was his fault. <laughs> I think he did not end up with what he wrote. There were a lot of things that happened in the writing process, and then there's the, the chopping, and then there's when they're actually filming it, and then there's the, the things that they didn't film. So I think a lot of elements came together to make this much worse than it <laughs> initially could have been. Mm -hmm. It could have been at least misery, too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of Dana Carvey's best segments ever on SNL. It's Misery 2 and Massive Head Wound Harry are the two <laughs> good Dana Carvey sketches. Wayne's World, if you count it. He's yeah, sort sure. of half him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wayne's World until Mike Myers took over in the second yeah. movie. If you in the comments say Church Lady, you're wrong. Just <laughs> Misery 2 Church Lady, that's it. <laughs> yeah, the reference to her in that, which is yeah. funny. <laughs> that's the only time Church Lady was ever funny. And George W., I swear. <laughs> was never you're, fucking you're funny. You're not gonna do it. <laughs> Maybe he was funny in that Blue Thunder show where he, <laughs> he was in it as a serious Blue character. Blue Steel. Blue Steel. Anyway, this is a fucking terrible movie. <laughs>
<laughs> the dad helps Brent Spiner because the mom has been kidnapped. She thinks that she's still at home, and Brent Spiner describes it as putting some sort of potion on the popcorn that she had, and that's why she thinks she's still at home, and these like hands keep coming up like ominously out of the dough. Mm. And I think either the entire thing or the last part of it was filmed to, d to be like, wait, we didn't actually get the mom. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know, mom! And then a scene of her going like, ha, ah, I didn't eat any more popcorn anyway. No more caramel corn for me. She seems to change accents too. I have no idea what country she's supposed to be from when she says the popcorn mm -hmm. line, because it doesn't sound Italian to me. Well, the description said an incredibly sweet Irish woman in her 50s, red hair, and a very large behind. I don't yeah, know what I, yeah, I don't know what that is. Like one of my favorite deleted scenes, which is very egregious, is the kidnapping of his assistant woman, Jennifer. I don't think they filmed it, though. I no, like they, they didn't. Just... It's gone because yeah. they have to have it just carried by a voiceover of the grandfather saying, like, oh, the dog was watching, but it wasn't able to stop Brent Spiner from kidnapping her. <laughs> and then you get the weird scene where he talks to his grandfather as a floating head. <laughs> OK, you can film that, but you don't need the scene of her getting kidnapped by Brent Spiner, which... You don't even know why that happened because he invited her to be his date at some party, which she ends up doing because of stupid Dana Carvey's pop-up book. It says like, <laughs> oh, you have to because my pop-up book says so. So she went on one date with him and then it seems like she's there with him for days for unknown reasons because you get a bunch of scenes that dissolve out with Dana yeah. Carvey. So it's like, how long has she been with Brent Spiner? And then he's like, I'm going to look through your purse. I'm like, why is he going to look through her purse? <laughs> and then he has to say, Save her with one of his dumb characters, Mr. Suave. Probably one of his least annoying ones in the movie, but still kind of annoying by the end of it. And then it was actually he's like, a character and not just a caricature of some culture or mm, something. Yeah. But then he's. I guess it was British. Yeah, character. it is British. <laughs> this is our homage to David Niven. Mm hmm. I felt really bad for Jennifer. It's such a thankless role. Mm -hmm. It's very typical of movies, comedy movies, especially of this time. The very bland, hot love interest. Yeah, they don't really they're like, give oh, her but anything. she's more competent than him. And it's like, yeah, it's so boring though. There's like, she's there for a function and that's about it. I guess she's dating some guy. Is that off? Is she with the Sky Z now? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, obviously, she'd fall in love with that. With the, the Creep. pistachio <laughs> nut. That guy. <laughs> Assistants commonly fall in love with their disguisey masters. Can you resist me? <laughs> After she leaves, he's like, I need to kidnap that girl that went on one date with me for unknown reasons and then make her be my eBay model on yeah, the dark they, web. They have black market eBay that he's streaming so people Live. will buy all of these priceless <laughs> artifacts that he's stolen. And his plan, as he tells Kevin Nealon, I don't know why Kevin Nealon's there or who he was, I missed that, but he tells him that he's going to super glue a mask of his face onto Pistachio's dad and then push yeah. him off. Cliff. Yeah, push him off a cliff and then make it seem like he died because apparently in this world and no one's going to do autopsies or realize no. it's a rubber mask or anything. But apparently it's not a rubber mask by the end. It's a magic spell yeah, because like, when he has to try and get his dad to, because I don't yeah, there's some crap gone, with the disguise force or whatever yeah, where he becomes the, control. The dark side of the force. Yeah, the dark side of the disguise. <laughs> he must have been pulled over to the dark side of energy. Cool. Exactly like Star Wars? They blatantly say it's Star Wars, but he gets taken over by the character he thinks he is for whatever reason, and then he thinks he's Fart Man. <laughs> and then he's like, Dad, no, you're my father. And then he starts shaking his head and slowly morphs back. It was a mask. We saw it in the case. Yeah. Why is it working like a magic spell now? It's the same reason why he could bite someone's nose off and spit <laughs> it back on. Things just happen in this movie. There's no logic to anything. It's as if it was written by nine. Olds. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like something like nine year olds this? made and then they would like immediately disown and like, like oh that dumb movie we made. <laughs> We're nine and a half now. That's garbage. If I was nine and I made Master of Disguise, I would feel like it's pretty good for a nine year old. I'm I just gonna say. Uh, I'd be like, you know what? I'd probably ground them. <laughs> Fantastico! Yes, yes. A young lady. Do you have any other scenes you want to talk about in Master of the Skies? Scenes, air scenes. quotes. What other scene wasn't finished? All of them. All of them. 
Scene missing, oh, scene missing, scene did, missing, the end. I did want to talk about the waiter guy who's an asshole to him. The actor was arrested for being part of the January 6th riot, so I don't know. Was that more embarrassing or Master of Disguise for him? <laughs> <laughs> They're also mentioning uh, one of his thugs was thing in the... The Roger Corman Fantastic Four. The Roger Fantastic Corman Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah. That is better than yeah, this. Yeah, honestly, though, it is. <laughs> they were ambitious. They made a somewhat incomplete movie as well, but they, you know, their heart was put into it. Yeah, there's and, more uh, heart in that than this. <laughs> yeah. The guy who is thing, he's the one that steps on the cow pie. Mm -hmm, <laughs> the yeah. really famous cow pie <laughs> scene from Master of Disguise. <laughs> what kind of a thing have I turned into? Man. What have you done? What have you done? Any other trivia facts? <laughs> What other national disasters do they, <laughs> do they put in this movie or relates to it in some way? I think we should just have this abruptly end because we have no finish. <laughs> I want to say, before before we abruptly finish, I do kind of recommend this. I and think cut off before she says that. <laughs> there are a lot of scenes where you're like... <clears throat> So it's kind of infuriating. Yeah, if you want to feel like you're constipated. <laughs> it, is, it is kind of infuriating. But there's some parts of it where it goes into a comedy that's so bad it's good. And I feel like that's harder to accomplish. Mm. <laughs> so bad it's bad? <laughs> you laughed uh, at the farts. There's uh, at least 1% of this movie. 1%. <laughs> If you want to watch 1% of this movie, you can probably find the clips of Brent Spiner farting. You'll see them in this review. If you see these farts and you like them, the rest of the movie's not like that. But no. <laughs> you might be kind of fascinated. It is interesting if you are a film person, like you like films and you're interested on in what not to do or mm -hmm. how things are crafted and how it goes really wrong. I think this is an interesting thing that you can kind of dissect and figure out what happened. The Brent Spiner villain could have been a funny thing if the movie was a bit better written. <laughs> I feel like he was a good foil because he knows how to do hammy acting. Yeah, and he so loves to do yeah. that. <laughs> oh yeah, there's hammy versus hammy in this movie. It was the perfect role for him. <laughs> 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 Wipe. <laughs> Goodbye, boys and girls, and God bless. Goodbye. The dumbest thumbnail in the world. <laughs> Are we the turtling dumbest for the turtling? movie in the world. <laughs> A thousand faces, zero laughs. <laughs> What was Brent Spiner's name again? Farty uh, McGee. Farty McGee. It was Devlin something. Devlin McFart. Devlin McFart. I want to make sure I got his name right. Let's I see. looked it up just before we started filming. Yeah, Immediately left my mind. Devlin Bowman. Devlin Bowman. I just want to look at one thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 